you put there, they would do the same thing, right? Uh, because the way the, the way Romans five was was composed by the author, uh, you know, you would arrive at the conclusion that Adam represented the whole world, even the unborn children, right? He represented everybody. So what he did there represented all of us. Uh, because he was guilty, he, you know, God passed judgment. Remember Genesis 3, after the fall, God passed the judgment, right? Uh, to death you shall return. From dust you were made, to dust you shall return. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, women will now experience labor pains and people will now have to work two or three jobs to make a living, right? So that was the curse of sin. So when, when, when that judgment, condemnation, judgment was passed to Adam, it wasn't just to Adam, but to all humanity. Right? Now, even unborn children will die. As soon as, you know, even newborn babies, sorry, newborn babies, unborn children, everybody will die physically. So maybe some people find this hard, you know. Uh, how come we were affected by the sin of Adam, right? So the way Romans 5 was composed, the way Paul wrote this is, you know, Adam represented the whole humanity. And if he was guilty, uh, everyone was guilty. If he were to die, that applies to every single person. If he lost the divine nature, remember the divine nature, he was created innocent. But after the fall, uh, that's... I really believe that's when total depravity entered his nature. He became a depraved person. He became a, sin, a sinful person. It's a condition. It's a nature that, that came upon as a result of disobedience. So instantly he switched from divine nature to sinful nature, Adamic nature or fallen nature. We call this the fallen nature or the depraved nature. And so this is where some theologians, uh, some modern theologians uh, disagree with this. They, they think we should not be equally guilty with the sin of Adam, right? That Adam is guilty for his sins. Uh, although they would admit that uh, we, we are also guilty, but for our own sins. Individuals is personal, not Adam's sin. So that's their argument. That's his sin. He's guilty for that. You know, I have my own sins. I'm guilty for that. So, and then uh, they, they think that every baby is born innocent until the baby sins. Mm. Right? Then he becomes like Adam, right? Mm. But uh, that's a different view. So, I'm not guilty. I have a newborn baby. He's not guilty of the sin of Adam. He's still innocent. But when he's five years old, he begins to rebel. That's when he becomes a sinner because of his own actions. And But the first five years, maybe uh, he's innocent. And some argue that innocent babies, when they die, they go to heaven. Right? But well, the, maybe. We don't know. The Bible is not clear. Because, you know, every time I argue, the whole week I was arguing with people who denies original sin. And so, <laughs> ulo But, you know, I have a couple of verses that I threw at them. You know, Psalms 58, verse 3, that says, you know, the wicked is separated from God from the womb. Mm. As soon as you conceive the baby, mm -hmm. 30 day old fetus, that baby is already separated from God. Oh. You know, the wicked is estranged. In other words, alienated, separated from God, right? From the womb. And speaking lies as soon as he's born. See, as soon as that baby is born, that baby is speaking lies. 
So it seems like the, the, the sinful nature is inborn, right? Hmm. In Psalms 51, David said, you know, in sin, my mother raised me, you know. Um, Conceived you know, me. I, you know, I was born with a sinful nature. In other words, I, yeah, I was born in, in, with a sinful nature and in sin, in the womb. From the womb, mother, I was conceived in mother, sin. Conceived. From the womb. You know, in sin, my mother conceived me. It seems like the moment he was a fetus inside his mother's womb, mm. he already had the sin nature, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he said, um, I was born in sin, and in sin, my mother conceived, conceived me. That's, me. That's the word. I was born in sin, and in sin, my mother conceived me. So he's talking about from the womb, inside the womb, from the moment of birth. It seems like he already had that sin nature. Right? No matter how cute the baby is, mm. it can be Hitler when it grows up. <laughs> you don't know, An abductor, yeah. a, mm -hmm. a killer, a murderer, a liar, a scam artist, a cheater, wow. Wow. a scammer, a hacker, right? An adulterer, a backbiter, a slanderer. <laughs> so, yeah, the debate where do babies really, well, some people say they go to heaven, some people say no, they're born with the sin nature, they go straight to hell. Well, only God knows. I don't debate that because it's not clear. But but what how does God deal with babies who were born with the sin nature from the womb? So that's how will God judge them, right? If they die a three year old, two year old, how would God judge them? I don't know. But here it's clear, the impact upon us is clear. Let's talk about how it affected us. So when, when Adam was proclaimed guilty, I was also guilty, even though I was not born yet. Mm. When he was condemned, when he was judged, I was also judged and under condemnation. Remember verse 18, condemnation came to all because of the sin. All are under condemnation, verse 18. Judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation. So we are born under the condemnation of God. From day one, as soon as you are born, you are speaking lies. It's already separated from God from the womb. So, yeah, we were born. The way I see this, we were born with Adam's nature. We were born with the same nature as Adam, right? You don't have to wait until you commit your first act of sin. You already had sin as a condition of the heart. It's a condition, not an act. It's a condition, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not an act, right? Say, you can say maybe, no, I don't have cancer. Yeah, because it's not yet showing up, but you have cancer inside of you. Yeah. You already have the condition of cancer. Yeah. So Everybody's cancer. How can you say that you're, you're not a sinner when you have a fallen heart already, right? And, and the condition is what will produce the action later on in life, right? So yeah, no matter what, how you deny original sin, uh, it's, I believe it's the classic orthodox belief of the evangelical churches, the doctrine of original sin. If you are questioning it nowadays, I don't know, is that a sign that you're becoming liberal? Because all kinds of error, as soon as you entertain, the, there's no original sin, you know. Uh, that was Adam's fault. You know, I'm a different person. I'm a much better person. Then self-righteousness, salvation by works will enter into the picture, right? Maybe kaya mayroong mga taong, ano eh, ang basis ng salvation nila yung paano nila pinoproject. Pagpaka-righteous ka lang. Good works. Be a nice person. <laughs> but that's not how I, how I understand the gospel. You know, uh, that's why Paul said we are not saved by works, not by self-righteousness. Why? Because no one, you can't. You cannot be, be you cannot produce through self-righteousness because of the sin of Adam, you were born with the Adamic nature. 
Mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. depraved nature. And you are born under condemnation already instantly. As soon as you're conceived, you're separated from God. As soon as you're born, you're under condemnation and judgment of God. You need to be born again. That's why John chapter 3, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. John 3. You know, John chapter 3, Jesus said, because those who are born in the flesh are flesh. Malinaw, di ba? But those who are born in the spirit are spirit. You know, that's, that's, that's revelation from God, you know. What, what did Jesus mean? Those who are born in the flesh are flesh. Those who are born in Adam are Adamic. Mm, sinners. Yeah. yeah. But those who are born of the spirit in Christ Jesus... They are a new creation. Thank you, Lord. Right? That's how you enter the You cannot enter the kingdom of God with your Adamic nature. You need to have the, na the new nature of Christ, the, the righteousness of Christ in you when you become born again, right? So, because we've been impacted by the sin of Adam, no matter how you read this. Uh, like one person kept saying to me, you know, uh, we're guilty for our sins, you know. Not because of the sin of Adam. Mm. Um, so, you, you mean to say you can grow up becoming a much better person than Adam if you just choose to be more righteous, self-righteous? I don't think so because, you know, if you, you know, if you put one rotting apple in a box, everybody rots, right? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, if if Adam got COVID, everybody gets COVID, right? Mm. If God, if Adam was infected by sin, we all have it. Because you know why? You cannot separate our connection because Adam was our first parent. Amen. That's why I said to this uh, girl, she's a lady. That we we are offsprings of Adam, right? And and whatever ha happened to Adam, whatever he lost in the garden, we lost. He lost his innocence. He lost the divine nature. We lost it too, because we are his offsprings, right? And whatever judgment came to him, condemnation, even though we're unborn, same thing. We're same thing was passed on to us to all men, right? And <clears throat> And Jesus, you know, what did Jesus say? You know, uh, the, the fruit is determined by the tree. Right? You know, Jesus gave that parable to illustrate the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees, the religious leaders. Um, Jesus condemned their hypocrisy and self-righteousness. That's why Jesus said, you know, uh, you know, a corrupt tree cannot produce good fruits, right? A bad tree cannot produce good fruits. And, and a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. So, in other words, it's the tree that identifies the fruit, yeah. that determines the fruit. If it's black apples, it will produce black apples, right? Where is black apple? I think if there's such thing as a black apple, nobody will eat it. Unless you grab it. <laughs> because it, it looks demonic. It means <laughs> another <Right>? fruit. <laughs> yeah. So it's the tree that produces, determines what the fruit is. So if Adam was corrupt, if plum. Adam fell at the garden, yeah. yeah, plum. If Adam fell at the garden and corruption entered his heart, and I, I am his offspr offspring, I came from Adam, right? So I, I possess the same nature. Yeah. That's why the first children murdered, committed the act of murder, right? Uh, who was that? Cain and Cain. Abel, the first murder committed by siblings. Mm. Are they siblings? They're siblings, right? Yeah. Can you imagine ha that yeah. happening in your family? That's, Cain and Abel. That's very traumatizing, right? Uh, because they were offsprings of Adam. They were born from Adam, right? Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I really think uh, there's no way we can get away from Adam. Kaya, beware, you know, of self-righteousness. We're all descendants of Adam. Uh, and sometimes we, we, we hear about parents, you know, and they're meeting their future balaes, you know. <laughs> meeting. And, uh, they try to gauge one another. Mabubuting tao yan, you know. In the outside. Yeah, talaga. <laughs> Okay, mag-aaway after two years, ha? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mabubuting tayo. They're good people, you know? That family, they're good people. You know, that, that child, he came from a good tree, you know? I'm very proud of him, you know? He will be my son-in-law, you know? Amen. I will have a son-in-law in Calgary. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's official, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nice. There you go. Official. Yeah. Amen. Official. Oh, wow. Good man. Mature. Yeah. Amen. Go to church. Amen. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> It's time. Yeah. You have to start somewhere. Amen? Amen. But then when I look at people, yeah, uh, there are no good people. I mean, uh, that's why Jesus said nobody's good except the Father, right? There there are no good people. We're all descendants of Adam. And we're all fallen. And we only become good when we receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So without Christ in you, you're a fallen creature. You're a fallen sinner. Right? And you have to accept this, brother. For if you are 60 years old and you don't have Christ, you have been living 60 years under condemnation and judgment of God. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. If you don't have Christ, you are already under the judgment and condemnation of God. Because verse 18, because of one man's sin... Judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. So, amen. There's one more verse here. Amen. Where's that? Anyway, forget it. Because Adam was the the prototype. Adam at the garden was the prototype of all humanity. Right? Amen. He was a pattern, you know, of things to come. You know, uh, Adam was the pattern, the prototype of what is to come. Everybody born into this world is just like him, like father, like son. Even though our sin is not identical, even though he ate the fruit, well, I just, you know, <laughs> I just stole the pencil, you know. I, I didn't eat the fruit. I just I, I just parked at the wrong parking, you know. I know it's no parking, but I gambled. I violated the municipal code, the city bylaw. I mean, that's not nothing compared to the sin of Adam. No, we're all the same, brother. Yes. Amen? You are not more self-righteous than Adam. Because he was your prototype. He was your fa- pattern, right? Car- you are a carbon copy of the pattern. Amen? Praise God. So it's really hard to deny this. Original sin the f- simply means the first sin. That's where it all started at the garden. And it spread to all of us. That's why we need salvation. We need to be saved from sin. We need to be reconciled to God. Amen. Now we're going to focus on the good news. Amen. So in Adam, we all fell. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Adam, we all die, but in Christ, we shall live. That's the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. And then here in verse 19. Okay, this is the, the comparison 
because of one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, that's Jesus, many will be made righteous. Amen. So by one man's obedience, Jesus obeyed the cross. Can you say amen? amen. amen. That was his mission. The reason why Jesus came to this world, brother, is to die on the cross. And Jesus obeyed that commandment. By one man's obedience, by Jesus' obedience, many were made righteous. So the only way we can reverse the sin of the condition of Adam, the sin nature of Adam we were born with, is to receive Christ, to believe in Christ. Because in Christ, we will be made righteous. When you believe in Jesus, amen, when you become born again, you will receive a new nature. <clears throat> amen. A new, you will become a new creation when you become born in Christ. So your first birth, you were born in Adam. Your second birth, you are born in Christ. Now, Jesus said you need the second birth before you can enter the kingdom of heaven. You need the second birth. You need to be born in Christ, born of the Spirit, born again. Amen. So that's the good news. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the good news. Amen. Uh, let's read again Romans Let's read the gospel here, Romans 3.23. Romans, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. It's true. Romans 5 said, because of Adam, all sinned. Right? Here in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. So you cannot say that I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. I was trained, raised up by my parents. You can't say that. You, because your first parent is corrupt. And your own parent is also corrupt. Because they all came from Adam. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So, therefore, all have sinned. Then 6.23, Romans 6.23. This is the gospel. This is the good news. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. In Adam, you receive condemnation, but in Christ, you will receive eternal life. Forgiveness of sins. Salvation. Amen. Reconciliation with God. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remember from the womb, you were already separated from God. But in Christ, you are reconciled again. You're reconciled back to the Father. Amen. The gift of God. And this is the gift of God. Eternal life is a gift. You don't have to do anything except believe, receive, and repent. Of course, you have to confess your sin to Jesus. You have to acknowledge that you're tired of the sin of Adam, that you want Christ this time. You have to believe by faith and accept by faith that free gift of eternal life and salvation. You have to come to Jesus and say, well, it's too bad. I admit I'm a fallen Adam. I'm a descendant of Adam, but now I want Christ to reverse the curse of sin. Amen. You have to be sorry for your sin. You have to confess your sin in order for you to be saved. Amen. And that's the good news of the Bible. Jesus came into, into this world to save sinners, to die on the cross, cross for us, to reverse the curse, the judgment, condemnation passed to Adam and all humanity. Amen. There is no other cure except faith in Christ 
Jesus. There is no other cure. Amen. Self-righteousness is not a cure. You need Christ. Amen. Do, will you trust a sinner who is a, a rapist who is self-righteous? Will you trust him? <laughs> Say your your daughter comes to you. You know I I'm gonna introduce my my boyfriend and you found out he's a serial killer. Oh, wow. Jesus name. Right. And, and your 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 daughter said, "Don't worry, Dad. He's righteous. He's good. He's 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 <laughs> self righteous. You know, he's trying to change himself. <laughs> you can't change yourself. No human effort will change your condition. You need a brand new heart. You need Christ. <sighs> Amen. No, no. Don't worry. He won't do it to me." <laughs> Well, he's still a serial killer, you know. How oh, can you sleep with him, you know? Oh. Well, not just serial killers. Even the most religious person is filthy before the eyes of God. You know, don't just believe, oh, Dad, I'm going to introduce my, my new boyfriend. Well, he's active in church, you know. <laughs> he's a sound man. He's... He's a member of the band, huh? Yeah. Those, those, those are yeah. nice, you know? That's where you find you find the man of God in the church. But what, how about the heart condition? Is he born again? Right? Is he born again? Amen. What if he's just religious? Amen? Then that means even going to church will not cure the sin of Adam, the Adamic nature. It won't cure it. That's why there's a lot of wicked people in church. That's right. Because they're just, you know, self-righteous people still operate in the flesh, in the Adamic nature. He's still born of the flesh. Right? Kahit bautismo mo yan ang sampung beses, he's still born of the flesh. Kahit suotan mo ng abito yan, bigyan mo ng makakapal na Bible. He is still born in the flesh. Kano nga si Nicodemus eh. Di ba? Pumunta siya kay Jesus, nakasuot puti pa siya. Ang bukang bibig agad ni Jesus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Ito si Jesus, hindi malam magsalita ng maayos. Good morning! Kumain ka na ba? Be nice! That which is born of you must be born again, or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Ganon na katam bating ni Jesus kay Nicodemus. You must be born again. You must be born again. Yeah. That means religion is not the cure. Amen. It's obvious. Yeah. It's Jesus. Do you know Him? Do you love Him? Is He in your heart? Have you been born again? Has He changed your life? Do you have the Spirit of God in you? Are you experiencing the conviction of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? Do you have a testimony? Are you Christ-like? Amen? Praise God. Christ-likeness is family-likeness. Amen? Kung kamukha mo pa si Adam, eh di kay Adam ka pa. You're still in Adam. Kamukha mo pa siya eh. Like father, like son. Pero kung kamukha mo na si Jesus, you are in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Your ways will be You may not changed. be perfect, but hey, I'm not the same person 30 years ago. Thank you, Lord. Right? So that's how you know. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's the good news. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Let's pray that our hearers... Um, what's the time now, Gina? What's the time now? Amen? Okay, 30, 30 minutes. so that's the good news. The Adamic nature cannot be uh, removed from us by religion, by self-righteousness, by good works. Only Christ can cure that Adamic nature. When he comes into your heart, he gives you a new nature. He gives you his righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. He makes you born again. He makes you brand new. He gives you a new identity. 
10 minutes pa. You are now in Christ, you know. No longer Adam. You know, our last name before is Adam. Do you realize that? <laughs> Joseph Alvin Adam. <laughs> Joseph Adam. <laughs> Joseph Alvin in Adam. <laughs> Camelo in Adam. Every single person has that close yeah. parent close parenthesis in Adam. But you when you become born again, in it's replaced by in Christ. <laughs> in Christ. That's the good news. And now when you stand before God, there's no condemnation. There is no judgment. Remember Romans 8 verse 1? There is now, therefore, there is no more condemnation. There is no more <laughs> condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 verse 1. Let's pray now. Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you that we are now ambassadors for the gospel, preaching the gospel to the world. We have a message of reconciliation. God is calling you right now to be reconciled to Jesus. Sin has separated you. You cannot resolve your sin, your own sin. You cannot erase it, remove it. You cannot correct it. Only Jesus is the cure for it. Let Jesus reconcile you to the Father. Jesus died for you to reconcile you to the Father. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Give all your sins to Him. Give all your problems to Him. For He cares for you. And you will have a brand new life. You will be set free from slavery of sin. You are no longer in bondage to sin. But you, now, you are now righteous in Christ Jesus. Your life will never be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter if you go to church. Do you have Christ in your heart? That's the important thing. Do you have faith? Do you have personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you born again? In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Many, Let many hear the gospel, Lord, and let many believe the gospel. I pray for the hearers, the viewers out there. To convict them by your Holy Spirit. We pray in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ and bless our fellowship, whatever we'll follow after this. Bless our gathering. Our fellowship is in the gospel. Our fellowship is in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for feeding us with your word today in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good morning. Special shout out to... Oh, I'll make them. Brother, I'll make them. Thanks for watching. Sister Alona. Evinia. Gilbert Nandito. Brother Gilbert. God bless. Thank, Thank you. Bless. God bless, brother. Have I'm glad good, you had no good. trouble connecting today. That's have good. Have a good day. Praise God. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's a beautiful day. See you next week. Anyone is welcome to come and visit us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You want to eat outside or inside? I don't know, whatever. It's probably just a small group. We can eat out inside maybe, save more time.